Being in the middle of the sea away from all our dear ones for our nation isn't that simple. Here we have a great topic for today to take you guys inside a Navy destroyer. A destroyer got a huge place when talking about the Navy and its defense. Mechanism. The destroyer acts as a powerful function for the Navy. Since the late 19th century, destroyers have performed various tasks, primarily defending surface forces and convoys. Being in the middle of the sea not knowing what is coming in the next moment is a life or death situation. For every second, the people inside a destroyer understand what will happen. An adventurous living condition is in the middle of roaring waves and climate, which can change any time. Being inside is not much fun when we talk about all these dangers and adventures. Do you guys know it is boring? Let's take a look at inside life of a US Navy destroyer. The life inside a destroyer doesn't provide normal working conditions. To live in such a condition requires a lot of courage. It is exciting and boring at the same time. At any moment, the people inside it must go anywhere according to their needs without a second thought. A destroyer is insignificant as an aircraft which makes everyone inside it get to know each of them very well. Everyone can watch and experience all the mechanisms inside. Each day starts with an announcement and the day goes like that. Good evening, Carney. This is Captain. Hey, uh, I want to congratulate you on a very good underway this morning. Every person inside that tells one thing, you will learn a lot from inside of that. The ship must be constantly watched, so its eyes and ears are there all the time. There are people inside the destroyer without such experiences, and they came here and had a tremendous change in life. The most helpful thing about being a destroyer is that no person works in a particular domain. Even if they studied electrical engineering, their hands had to reach every sector of the destroyer. They are a family there. That's a very plus point. Every person can experience a variety of things. Historically, a group of destroyers and a single destroyer tender operated together since destroyers were light ships with limited endurance for unattended ocean operations before World War II. After the war, guided missile technology made it possible for destroyers to serve as surface combatants in place of battleships and cruisers. As a result, guided missile destroyers were more powerful and capable of operating independently. At the beginning of the 21st century, destroyers were the norm for surface combat in ships worldwide. Only the United States and Russia were recognized as officially operating cruisers of the heavier class. Neither battleships nor real battle cruisers are still in service. Modern guided missile destroyers can transport nuclear-tipped cruise missiles and are similar to tonnage to cruisers from World War II, but have substantially better firepower. Guided missile destroyers like those in the Arleigh Burke class are bigger and more strongly armed than the majority of early vessels categorized as guided missiles cruisers, measuring 510 feet, 160 meters long, having a displacement of 9,200 tons, and having an arsenal of more than 90 missiles. Due to its size and armament, the Chinese Type 055 destroyer has been referred to as a cruiser in certain US Navy accounts. When talking about ETS, electrical technicians repair everything inside a destroyer from mobile phones to simple speakers to complex systems like communication weapons, and as a result, they get pretty much experience on anything. Weapons mate, we are in charge of all small cruiser arms including pistols, shotguns, rifles, torpedo tubes and numerous other pieces of equipment as well as 50 caliber and 240S and are in charge of maintaining and issuing anything related to them as part of our duties. People inside a destroyer describe life like this. It is tedious but it is adventurous. You get the real sense of being a sailor and being in the Navy by part of a crew. Thunderdome. It's not a typical working environment. We don't have any mozzies to stick to. The clue will become the second part of the family. Many people describe these lawyers as greyhounds, but they also refer to them as the workhorses of the name because they're almost like the Swiss Army knife. Destroyers took part in the skirmishes that led to the Battle of Heligoland Bight and performed various tasks during the Battle of Gallipoli including serving as fleet screening vessels, troop transporters and fire support vessels. 
In the Battle of Jutland, which saw fierce small boat battles between the main fleets and several reckless charges by unsupported destroyers or capital ships, more than 80 British destroyers and 60 German torpedo boats participated. A complicated night battle between the German high seas fleet and a portion of the British destroyer screen also ended at Gutland. The threat changed during World War I as the submarine or U-boat was developed. The sub can dive underwater to fire torpedoes while remaining concealed from bombardment. In the war, destroyers possessed the speed and weapons to ram or fire at submarines to stop them from diving. Torpedoes would have a hard time hitting destroyers because of their shallow draught. Some describe the destroyer like this. Okay, I believe we should focus on our work. We have three sinks, one shower, two toilets, and 24 racks of women where I live. The terms of departure are as follows. Everyone settles into their life and moves on to one another, nothing except themselves. The living setup inside, it is also like a war within there, but there are some beautiful and courageous minds. Let's take a look at the way people inside describe it. Here it is. This is home. I like to... I can sit up in it, which is pretty nice, because otherwise you're kind of constricted to this little, like, tinder box of love. It's strange because I've never worked anywhere, but you get used to it. Sure, it's small and there isn't much room, but you get used to it and make it your own. I like to, uh, I can sit up in it, which is nice because otherwise you'd be lying down. I want to sit up in it, which is nice because otherwise you're constrained to this little tinderbox of love, where we're allowed to have an 8x11 sized area for four family photos. Hanging out within 200 feet, you get used to it. Yeah, it's small and it's not a lot of wiggle room, but it's like yours, you know, and you get comfortable. We each have our DVDs or emergency escape breathing gear just in case, you know, horrible things happen. The kitty cat, good doggy goldfish, whatever you want. Lights go out, there's fire and smoke, we can identify him. And we have access to clean air for approximately 15 minutes, so we can go. It is how the people live there. The aircraft carrier is a highly prized possession. The US Navy wants to safeguard it, but enemies will seek to destroy it. Destroyers, cruisers, and frigates can help with that. They provide coverage for the carrier. The anti-air and anti-missile capabilities of the missile systems aboard U.S. destroyers take precedence over ship-to-ship -ship or ship-to-shore abilities. Submarines are a carrier's other main threat. To defend the airline, destroyers are typically outfitted with sonar and anti-submarine weapons. Almost often a part of a carrier battle group, destroyers seldom ever operate alone. Destroyers have historically supported ships with flagships handling most of the action. Here the story goes like this, and we're winding up over here. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel, and we'll be back with another fantastic video.